Hey friends, Joe here at Reverb. Today we're going to be talking about the basics of setting up your own PA system. There are hundreds of different kinds of new and used PA systems on Reverb. Today we're going to distill that down and talk about a couple of different types and what might empower you the most to get going with your rehearsal or your live gig situation. <laughs> As you're getting started with setting up your PA system, assuming most of you will be singing through a vocal mic, uh, plenty of microphone options on reverb, maybe the most ubiquitous being the Shure SM58, durable, always sounds good, and you'll also need some XLR cables, otherwise known as mic cables, to plug your microphone into the mixer or the speaker. Okay, let's get into different PA setups. The first and probably the simplest form is a powered speaker that you can plug a microphone or an instrument directly into the back of. Some options for these are the Fender Passport, or uh, I've been using for years the Fishman Soloist, which is really great. Most of these maybe have two inputs, so if you're doing a solo gig where you're playing guitar and singing, this works great. Some of these also have EQ options, and as far as the Fishman, it even has some cool reverb on it as well. This is the simplest option, but also could be the best option for some of you, depending on what you're doing. Okay, our second option is a powered speaker with a non-powered mixer. So now we're taking our microphones or our instruments, plugging them into our mixer, which we have individual level controls, more effects, more EQ, and then we're going out of the mixer via XLR or quarter inch cables into a powered speaker. A great thing about this option is that a non-powered mixer is pretty affordable. So it's an easy way to expand your functionality of your PA system at a pretty cheap cost. Our third option is a powered mixer with passive or non-powered speakers. A benefit to this option is that the power is coming from the mixer itself. So all you need to do is take speaker cables out of the mixer and go straight into the speakers. These speakers are lighter because they don't have the power in them and you don't have to plug them in, so it's a little less hassle. And the fourth option is having a power amp in between your non-powered mixer and speakers. A benefit with this option is that you can match the amount of output with many different types of speakers. The power amp option could be a bit overkill if you're just looking for a simple option for now. Okay, so before we get into physically setting up your PA system and where to put your speakers, let's talk about some best practices. Um, first of all, turning on your PA system. Always, 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 your master and all of your volume channels and all your gain levels, turn them all down before turning on your mixer. Um, I have a few stories of my own as a youngster going to play gigs and setting up my own PA system and there were a few times where I would turn that thing on and the sound that comes out of those speakers if your master level is up is so terrible. <laughs> It's actually terrible on an emotional level because what it does is it physically hurts people and then it ruins at least the first part of your gig because all of a sudden there's a performer at a bar that nobody trusts and, and, and who's literally hurt you. <laughs> it's so terrible. So then automatically your performance is, is timid and nervous and is, is surrounded by... by, by uh, a bad first impression. So turn the master level down immediately before you turn on your PA. To the same effect, if you're using powered speakers, make sure that the master level on the back of the speaker is down before turning it on. Cool? Everything's turned on, your PA system is set up. Now, what you want to do is get the most volume out of your system, right? You want to be able to cut through the noise, uh, but then a problem occurs when you're turning up volumes, and that's feedback. So, first thing, best practice, don't ever point the mic directly at the speaker. <laughs> the gig's ruined. If that happens, and your mic is on a stand and the speaker's behind it, which we'll talk about in a minute, don't cover the mic capsule with your hand. It makes it worse. So that brings us to speaker placement, okay? If we don't want our microphone ever pointing directly at a speaker, then we want to have our speakers in a live gig setting always in front of the line of mics, okay? You got a couple singers in your band or just you right here, here's my line. I want my speaker in front of that so it never happens where the speaker and the mic can be facing each other. In a rehearsal setting, if you want your speakers acting more as monitors, you want them facing towards you 
with you singing this way into your mic. Again, never the speaker directly behind the microphone where it's going to be facing it. You're probably noticing right now that I am breaking the very rule that I just established by having the microphone in front of the speaker like this. So it's worth considering, it's worth noting that at very low levels, it's okay to do this. Um, I've played dinner parties and, and stuff like this where if everything's really low, you can use your main speaker kind of as, as a monitor as well behind you. But in a full band setting, you're definitely gonna wanna take those precautions and not face the speaker towards the mic. Okay, next we are going to talk about more potential feedback problems. But before that, someone left a pink purse in the front office. Pink purse in the front office, please come claim that, thank you. So now you have your speakers where you want them, you got your mics where you want them, and now we're going to basically test uh, the room for feedback. Ultimately, we want to maximize the amount of volume by minimizing feedback through the EQ section of the mixer. So, a good way to test this is try to make the room quiet first, if you can, if you're not in a tavern somewhere. Kick everybody out, have some alone time with you and your new PA together, you know? And then you want to turn up their main mix slowly, always slowly, until you start to hear feedback. And then control that feedback with the EQ setting on your mixer. Now if your mixer has a parametric EQ, then it's even easier because you can pinpoint the exact frequency and bring them down accordingly. This mixer only has a high and a low, which you can still do a fair amount with. You're identifying where the feedback is happening and you're tuning to the placement in the room and what's going on around you. Then when you bring the volume back down to where it's going to be, you might need to compensate a little bit by bringing some of those frequencies back up and depending on the quality you want in your vocal mic, but now you have a little bit of a better understanding of where the feedback is happening. Another feedback problem could arise from effects. Uh, I love reverb just as much as the next person and the next person after that. But if you have too much reverb, you could be getting feedback from that. Turn your reverb down a little bit. I know it sounds nice and silky, but you can sacrifice a little bit of reverb for a clearer vocal. Now let's get to some of the pro tips or the PA hacks. You want your vocal mics to be loud. You want your vocals to be, to be cutting through in a performance, right? Now, as, as a guitar player myself, I know that I'm, uh, I'm guilty of this as well. Nobody likes to hear from a sound guy or from a member of your band to turn down your amps. And no drummer likes to hear, try playing a little softer. However, those are actually very practical and important measures to take for maximizing your performance and your stage volume and, and the overall performance of what you're giving your audience. So if you can't hear your vocals, Turn down your amps. Try putting a little bit of the kick drum in the PA system. This is going to add a little pizzazz to the performance and it's going to help you and your audience. This is one of the oldest cliches in pop music but it still stands true. Everybody wants to feel the beat. Put some kick in the PA. If you don't have a bass rig, try taking the bass straight into the PA. It doesn't sound terrible uh, and even to improve that signal a little more, try a, a bass a DI box. Plenty of options for those on Reverb as well. Check it out. If you have some other sounds or samples that you want to add into your live performance, plug in your laptop or a Roland SPDS pad or something like that, it could seriously enhance your performance and folks might not even know. In a rehearsal situation, try running a click track through the PA. This is a wonderful practice to tighten up your set. Okay, there's some basics on setting up a PA system and some different styles of PAs. In the comments, leave some and let us know what's been working for you and we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.